Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I am recovering from a cold, so hopefully this will go well. Um, I've consumed my own body weight in LEMSIP over the last few days. Um, so yeah, as Gina says, uh, my name is Sean, an engineering manager from, from Spotify in Stockholm. Uh, as you can tell from my incredibly northern accent, I am not Swedish. Uh, I moved to Stockholm around three years ago. Um, spent one year working on the desktop client. But for the last two years, I've worked full-time on design systems. Prior to joining Spotify, I spent three years working at the BBC, uh, as Gina said, working on the sport website, working on the online uh, events platform, but also spent a lot of time working with the BBC's gel team on, on their design system. Uh, today, I want to talk to you uh, about the journey Spotify has been on with design systems. This is going to take you through a bit of history. We're going to look at uh, some of the things we've learned along the way from the different approaches we've taken. Uh, and then finally, I want to introduce you to Spotify's new model and approach to design systems. First of all, I want to take you all back 13 years to 2006. This is what Spotify looked like at the time. No designers, just a handful of engineers with the idea to stream music to your computer, making client mockups in Microsoft Paint. Um, I'm told by some like old school Spotify, like, this is a legit client mockup. Um, thankfully, we hired some designers. 2008, we launched Spotify on the desktop. Um, over the next few years, we expanded onto other platforms, launching web-based experiences, but most notably uh, on mobile platforms. These different platforms were owned and maintained by different teams. Our product experience was all over the place, really fragmented. And as design systems people, I don't, I'm pretty sure I, you can see what's wrong here. I don't, I don't think you need to be a systems person to see what's wrong here. Around 2013, the company decided to, to evolve its branding approach, aligning the brand experience between marketing and product that had been kind of different up until that point. Um, to align with this new brand approach and to try and address that incredible fragmentation that existed within our product, product experiences, uh, we started an initiative to try and um, visually align our experiences. This is really Spotify's first step into what we now call design systems. We called it Project Cat. And this is where Spotify started to look something more like what we're familiar with today, a sort of signature dark experience. Cat was a massive project, took over a year to implement, involving teams from across the organization completely shifting their focus um, on implementing this huge product redesign. But then after that redesign had been launched, the CAT team was disbanded. People went back to working on other things. Soon became clear we had a new challenge. How do we maintain this newfound consistency? In 2015, we evolved our branding experience again, simplifying further, controversially changing the shade of green that we use. Um, but this fresh, new, streamlined branding approach needed to be reflected within our client experiences. But the project CAT team had been disbanded. Everyone had gone away working on other things. So we started thinking, how can we implement large cross-cutting visual changes in a more sustainable way? That led to the creation of Spotify's first design language system, Glue, or Global Language for a Unified Experience. Some of you may have, may have heard of this one. Um, an important thing to note here about Glue is that the term Glue, it, it referred to both the design system and the single centralized team that worked on it, as well as documenting um, styles and patterns and components and the team also tried to implement a number of redesigns, firstly incorporating that newer brand approach with, with a new shade of green, and then onto a full visual refresh of our products. And this is where we started to see some problems. Through the team's success, they grew to a pretty uh, respectable size, you know, well past the sort of six to 12 people you typically find in a team at Spotify. Our team grew to being nearly 30 people with plans to grow further. Glue did a really fantastic job at bringing more consistency, modern ways of working to our mobile applications and a classic desktop experience. But despite the substantial size of this team, it didn't really cover a whole lot more ground. It never truly achieved that goal of being the global Spotify-wide design system. We also found two other major challenges with the approach that we were taking with Glue. Now, we can't do a presentation about Spotify without talking about the Spotify model. Um, now, of course, this approach has it evolved and it's changed over the years to keep up with the company's scale and pace. But one thing that's remained core to the way we work is the autonomous squad. Small, cross-disciplinary group set up around a defined mission, empowered uh, to make their own decisions on how to get there. Having a single team responsible for UI is great if you're aiming for overall consistency. And many companies find that that works great for them. But for us, it essentially just became a big bottleneck. 
Not great if you're a, you're a company that's putting a particular focus on speed and moving quickly. If you're a team with, let's, uh, tasked with, let's say, I don't know, con con uh, increasing consumption on podcasts, and you want to run an experiment, now all of a sudden, you're blocked behind this one team that owns all of the UI. And we saw teams, they started to work around Glue. They created their own UI components so they could move forward and they could experiment. The second major challenge we faced was that the company changed direction. And the Glue approach was not scalable, nor suited to, to this new direction. The company, really, the company really shifted direction in two dimensions. Um, the first one is ubiquity. We want Spotify to be everywhere. And Spotify is not a website, a destination you visit, or, or just a piece of software that runs on your, on your computer or your phone. Spotify has become part of people's lives, a constant presence, giving you access to the stuff you want to listen to whenever. And whilst the importance of the individual application is, is diminished in this um, ubiquitous scenario, you still need them. You need a lot of them. For us, that means 45 in-house experiences, ranging from our multiple mobile applications, classic desktop experience, multiple in-browser experiences, at home on your TV, in your car, on your watch, and, and yes, on your fridge. Like This is a genuine, real thing. Um, and that's not counting the 300 plus partner built integrations that we also support. Think Spotify on your Sonos system, the tens of thousands of third party integrations. The glue approach of centralizing the ownership of the UI layer for a given platform was never going to scale across 45 platforms. We were already coming up to being 30 people and we could just about support three. The second directional change the company made was focused around audiences. For the last sort of 10 years, Spotify focused almost exclusively on the consumer music sort of listening experience. Now the company wanted to start creating experiences for artists, podcasters, labels, advertisers. This resulted in a whole new category of product the design system needed to support. A new visual style, new types of data to represent, entirely new experience. The single centralized team was not going to work. The glue had become unstuck. The decision was made to close down Glue. Stop investing in this approach that was not compatible with the way the company works or optimize for the direction uh, the company was heading. But it wasn't that straightforward. Glue, the team, was disbanded. The members distributed around the organization. Glue, the system, remained. It was still used within the mobile clients and in and the desktop application, but now it had no dedicated owner. This move essentially took us from a place of, of extreme centralization to one of extreme decentralization, like overnight. What about that 45 platforms? Like, we still need to solve for that. When the full magnitude of the, of the problem dawned on Spotify, we set up a team to solve it. That team is my team, DLS. Uh, we were tasked with, with finding a way to scale our visual language across our huge product landscape. Now, there's no way that we all of these platforms could share the same tech. Smartwatch, speaker, TV, desktop app, it's too different. Thankfully, some clever folks had an idea that might just work for us. Design tokens. Tokens offered us a way that we could encapsulate our visual, uh, visual design and distribute it across our 45 platforms. So we set about researching, building, establishing a de design token process that could work at Spotify. We built a pretty comprehensive design token pipeline that integrates across all of our key products, uh, sorry, key platforms and experiences. Uh, tokens integrate directly into our documentation, and we've got some pretty cool integrations with Sketch and Figma. But by building on top of tokens, we found that it makes it much easier for us to ship visual changes and maintain a coherent experience across platforms. Coming back to, to that time when we changed the shade of green, it took the teams months to cover the relatively low number of platforms we supported at the time. With tokens, we can now do that centrally in minutes instead of months. And now we had two design systems. Did we? Whilst DLS was investing in tokens, uh, focusing on them 45 platforms, the new side of the business was designing experiences for artists and labels and advertisers. Most of these were, were web-based experiences, sort of from the ground up, new projects. The team started abstracting the components out into, into a library so that they could reuse them across all of these new experiences they were building. They gave that library a suitably sticky name, Tape. Tape is a reusable set of 
50 or so components, patterns available in React and Sketch. And with this library, we've seen massive grassroots adoption across the company. Tape is used in over 150 applications. 80% of them are outside the part of the business that originally created and owns and maintains that library. The team took a very different approach with Tape compared to Glue. The library is open. Contributions are actively uh, invited and accepted compared to Glue's approach of sort of being closed and locked down. This resulted in the sort of growth of a, uh, of a fantastic community around this library, uh, a community that's led by a few dedicated designers and engineers, but where everybody's invited to, to contribute and help improve the library. And we've then seen that these uh, contributors, they then go on to become advocates for the library, and it further grows the, consumer, uh, the, sorry, the customer base. And as a result of this, this community, this sort of internal open source approach that we've been taking, uh, it's organically become the de facto web UI library at Spotify. So like tokens, tape shows that design systems can work at Spotify, providing you're, focused, uh, providing you're solving a specific focused problem, uh, and you're doing so in a way that aligns with the way the company works. This gives us three design systems. So Spotify is now living in this decentralized design system world. We saw the idea of teams solving design systems problems locally became more and more common. So earlier this year, we thought, ah, oh, I know it's a fun exercise. Let's try and find all the design systems that exist at Spotify. We counted 22. We still keep finding more. Somebody keeps dropping one behind the back of the sofa. These are systems of varying quality, maturity, states of maintenance. A lot of great work has gone into these systems. So much useful information, patterns, components, but they're all independent. Nothing tying them together. Nothing except sticky adhesive metaphors in their naming. So now we've tried both extremes in, in how you can manage a design system. We've tried the, the extreme centralization with glue, one team owning everything, calling all the shots, acting like the design system police. And we've tried extreme decentralization, teams creating their own systems, solving their own problems locally. We started thinking about this problem. How can we make it better? And there's a Swedish word, log on. It means just the right amount. What's the right balance between centralized and decentralized for Spotify? When you look at the, the problem space we're trying to solve for, 45 platforms, 22 systems like that we know of, two, around 200 designers, 2,000 engineers. But crucially, all of this complexity, it's all just Spotify in the eyes of the end user. One brand, one service, one marketplace. We needed to unify our design systems. Could we take what we would learned about what does and doesn't work for design systems at Spotify? Could we iterate and build on what we had? But Gina, she talks about design systems being for people. And whilst we obviously care deeply about the end user, we consider our users to be the, um, sorry, our customers to be the designers, the engineers, the writers, the products folks that, that, that build Spotify. Now, 22 design systems, they formed around local needs. But for new starters, and many, maybe even like many old hands, it's, it's baffling. We, when we spoke to our internal customers, we heard loud and clear that philosophical answers to where are all the design resources, what button should I use here, they just weren't cutting it. They wanted single, short answers, no excuses. We needed to take them seriously and design our design system like we would a product experience, unified, accessible, based on a coherent vision for delivering value consistently uh, and incrementally. To achieve this, we started creating and establishing a new internal brand because we wanted something people could rally around. Because remembering the names of 22 systems and which sticky thing you're supposed to be using obscures the user experience. And Spotify's internal culture it thrives on, on creativity, and internal branding is a huge part of that. Um, teams, departments, initiatives, they take great pride in branding themselves, and we felt that like this was no different. Encore is our second generation of design systems. We're calling it in that because the approach is new, the framework is new, the brand is new. But we've avoided the temptation to build that one integrated system to rule them all. Encore is not a from, ground, from the ground up new thing. It's a relatively lightweight organizational layer with one goal. Bring Spotify's design system landscape on a path of convergence rather than one of divergence. This is what it looks like under the hood. It's made up of a few different parts. Uh, the framework is what ties it all together, comprised of, of, of branding, positioning, shared terminology because naming is hard, Shared tooling, sketch plugins, linters, CLI tools, a single documentation website for efficiency, but also to provide a unified user experience for our customers. 
At the center, we have Encore Foundation, Spotify at its most basic level. This is where we keep things like color, type, sp uh, motion, spacing. We've got guidelines for writing and accessibility. This is where our tokens live. This is going to be a really thin layer, but it goes everywhere. Um, using this is going to become the bare minimum for a product at Spotify. And whilst these sort of tokens and foundations, they're incredibly powerful to, and useful to Spotify, individual designers and developers, they need reusable components. But sharing these across technical platforms is hard. In some cases, it's completely infeasible. So we need you to break things down again. We have Encore Web. It's where our web components live. You find all the things you'd find in your typical web design system, buttons, forms, dialog controls, more. Um, these components, they can be used on anything built with web tech. Web, uh, web apps to websites, the desktop client, and yes, that fridge thing. Um, but note how the web system, it draws from foundation. The components are built on top of tokens. They follow the guidelines and the patterns defined in the foundation. There's a similar part for mobile as well. Again, based on foundation, housing, the most common components that are used across our multiple mobile applications. In this next layer, we're having, uh, we have what we refer to as local design systems. Local systems are where we can keep elements that are tailored to specific products or audiences. For example, maybe there's some specific web components that are only used in our creator experiences for, for artists or for podcasters. Maybe a special navigation pattern or a specific table layout. These components would belong to the creator web design system, which is, of course, built on top of Encore Web and, in turn, Encore Foundation. Again, similar idea on mobile. Our consumer um, mobile application is a hugely important part of Spotify. Many teams working on it at the same time. With so many people working on this application, we needed shared components, shared patterns. They live within the consumer mobile part of Encore. Now, everything we started off with here is, is either based on an existing system or we've straight up like uh, and rebrand, sorry, based on an existing system which we've straight up uh, rebranded, or uh, we've abstracted parts of them to form new Encore systems. They were already fulfilling important needs, doing so successfully, and we didn't feel the need to reinvent the wheel lose the learnings uh, that we already had and the successes. And we don't think this is the final set, so we've designed processes so we can add and remove local systems as needed, whether that's several teams discovering commonalities that could be shared, or a single application with, with lots of teams working on it. It's OK, as long as it's built on top of the common foundation, managed through the Encore framework, and of course, we want to keep this number low. We don't think everybody needs a local system. We certainly don't think we need 22. So we're going to keep that number low. Each small circle here is a fully fledged design system. It builds on other systems. It has a defined API. It's owned and maintained um, by dedicated staff who know their customers well. It has a familiar internal structure, approach to naming. And crucially, each system must provide deeply integrated design, documentation, and code. Encore is not a single team. It's several teams. Some full-time, some part-time, located in different parts of the organization, different parts of the world, working together. We have a dedicated program manager who helps us coordinate all of these teams, keeping us on track, keeping us on, uh, in sync. Really what we're aiming for here is, is like the, the minimum amount of overhead required to achieve a unified thing. So hopefully this gave you some insight into uh, and an overview of how we're approaching design systems at Spotify, how we're building a, maybe like a system of systems, if you like. This stuff is still really fresh for us. We've started rolling parts of this out, building teams, uh, testing these processes. Um, but we're really excited about the path we're on. And we're going to share more about this going forward. So look out for publications on Spotify.design. Uh, and I just want to close by summarizing some of our key learnings. And we've tried to crack design systems several times. We've learned new things along the way. Design systems take time. And if the first attempt doesn't stick, then keep trying. Like, this is worth doing. This stuff is important. We've accepted that. We're probably never going to be perfect, maybe as a result of, of how we work as a company, uh, the technical constraints of the platforms that we're on. But we've accepted, and we've accepted that we can't enforce consistency on 45 platforms, but it needs to be, and it can be coherent, and we're cool with that. The final and biggest learning for us is the importance of understanding your company's culture. No two companies are the same. Um, you know, we might have some things in common, but, but wholesale copying and pasting an approach is, is, is never going to work. Uh, you know, building a successful design system is m about much more than, than just uh, components and tokens. If the system goes against the grain of your company, you're going to get unstuck. 
The system needs to embrace your company's culture, characteristics, and peculiarities. For us, this means we have to acknowledge that the huge product landscape that we live in and the way that our teams work. Rather than having a single centralized team like Glue, it's much better for Spotify to have a family of design systems taken care of by many teams. Back.